you very much uh, to discuss with us uh, what I think surgical aspects or what is your main point? Yeah, I'll be discussing about the basic conceptualization of rhinoplasty. And yeah. the basis of rhinoplasty will be surgical, naturally, but uh, the basic, basically I will be discussing about the concept, concepts of rhinoplasty. What are the basic deformities and what should be advised to the patient in such cases and what has to yep. be done? Yes. Well, very good. Thank you. Uh, in Germany, we have uh, a lot of different techniques. Uh, some do it like a sheen and some do it like a pack. And uh, some do it like me, uh, the, the Stellmach. School, but I'm I'm very much uh, interested in to follow you and see uh, your results, and I'm sure your results are great. So it's a pleasure to meet you and to listen to your talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, dear colleagues, uh, let me uh, welcome Professor Hans Robert Medelman. Professor is here today, and it is an honor to have him here. And uh, Professor has started this Tuesday afternoon series, Tuesday morning series from Germany. And we have successfully brought different experts around the world. And Professor himself has talked twice and thrice in these series. And today we bring you, uh, so welcome Professor. Uh, thanks a lot for joining in. And today we bring you our expert uh, plastic surgeon and ENT surgeon both. Dr. Uh, Ranjan Nag and uh, Dr. Ranjan Nag is uh, also one of my uh, senior actually colleague under which I have uh, trained uh, in uh, early years actually and uh, I think Dr. Ranjan right now is sitting in uh, Abu Dhabi. <laughs> so today I'll be well, uh, discussing about the basics of rhinoplasty. Dr. Ajay, is my screen available? Yes. yes, sir. It is very much visible and you are very much nicely audible. Okay, thank you. So today I'll be discussing about the basics of rhinoplasty. I'll just give a conceptual overview about the rhinoplasty. First of all, I'll be discussing about the aesthetic viewpoints. Thereafter, I'll be discussing about the common deformities and then how to correct the deformities. It's just a gist of all the things so that the beginners can get benefited from this presentation. Anyway, so rhinoplasty, when you discuss about rhinoplasty, it's, all of us know that it is uh, something, uh, some aesthetic improvement in the nose. Apart from that, there is also, we also do the correction of the deformities. And in today's date, we also look into the functional improvement inside the nose with the help of rhinoplasty. So that means we improve the nasal blockage with rhinoplasty, which we term as the open septorhinoplasty. In earlier days, septoplasty was done from inside the nose, but nowadays open septorhinoplasty is done in which the nose is opened by an external incision and then the septoplasty is done. This helps in better improvement in the nasal passage. And this has become a very important part of rhinoplasty. Apart from that, we correct the nasal valve area uh, with the help of rhinoplasty. So the concepts are same, the principles are same. So uh, that is also an important part of rhinoplasty nowadays. Anyway, I'll be focusing more on the correction of deformities and aesthetic improvement. So let's start with the aesthetic key points. So I'll just sh share with you an image. Just look into the image. The first nose that has been operated and in the second view, second image, we have the operated nose. So I hope you could, uh, you can appreciate the difference between the noses, uh, between the pics. So in the operated nose, you can see there is some angulation in the bridge of the nose, whereas it is almost flat <clears throat> in the first or otherwise I would say there is little of swelling of the supra tip region. So Along with, I'll also be defining the terms. So the first term that you need to know about rhinoplasty is the tip of the nose. So this area is called tip of the nose. This is the anterior projection of the nose, basically the most anterior part of the nose. And tip is defined by two aspects. 
one is the projection of the tape that means how far it is from the face and second is the rotation of the tape rotation means how upward it is how much upward it is so if you if you compare the two images in the second image the tip has rotated upwards this aspect of rhinoplasty is called tip rotation and along with that in the second image we can see there is some break in the continuity in the dorsum as you can see here it's not as straight in the first one here it is going like this then taking an angulation and then going straight up so this break is called supra tip break supra tip break so these two are very important parts very important aspects of rhinoplasty one is the tip what we uh, call as tip rotation and the other is supra tip break which is basically a discontinuity from the supra tip to the dorsal region and formation of an angulation in this region so this is an image how our tip is rotated upwards or downwards it's not only upward rotation sometimes downward rotation is also required so it is rotated along an arc the center point of which is the external auditory canal or the external auditory meatus so along that along this arc the tip is rotated either upwards or downwards if we rotate it upwards then we call it as the rotation and if we rotate it downwards then it is called derotation so these were the important aspects of aesthetic rhinoplasty <clears throat> next is projection projection is how far the tip is from the face so when we see the supra tip region and the tip region so this is the supra tip the region above the tip is called supra tip region so we can see that the tip is ahead of the supra tip by about 1 to 2 mm this is very important an ideal nose should always have a tip which is little ahead of the supra tip region and other regions of the nose so this distance of the tip from the face is called tip projection and this is also a very important aesthetic point during rhinoplasty then next term i would like to explain about is the upper lip so normally uh, some people get confused what is upper lip basically upper lip is defined up to the base of the nose up to the place where the nose starts so it is not only the pinkish part but also the part which is covered with the skin so the upper lip is the complete this region so aesthetically the upper lip distance should be the upper lip length should be equal to the projection of the nose that means the tip of the nose to the subnasal this part is called subnasal should be equal to the distance between the subnasal and the upper lip upper lip lower lip junction basically this point so this whole length should be equal to the this length of the projection so this makes a very ideal nose in indian nose we usually see the tip is not so much projected under projected nose whereas in the caucasian nose uh, the tip is well projected ahead and in the asian nose it is again not good not projected well even with respect to the uh, indian nose asian nose uh, we, what we call is the south asian nose so that is not as projected as like the indian nose the next next aspect of rhinoplasty which is very important is the nasofacial angle so if i don't go into the details it's basically an angle between the nose and the face <coughs> and there is a method called goody's method i won't go into the details but actually this angle defines how nicely the nose is projected upwards it defines the length also so this angle should be ideally 35 degrees or it can be the range can be between 30 and 40 degrees that makes a very ideal nose so just going back to these things the first thing was the tip rotation which is very important aspect the second was the tip projection the third was uh upper lip and tip projection ratio and the fourth one was the nasofacial angle so whenever we do rhinoplasty we try to make this angle in this parameters ideal so that we get a better nose then there are two other things called nasofrontal angle and nasolabial angle now we have come out of the nose practically so 
we now see what is the angle between the forehead and the nose that we call as the nasofrontal angle so this nasofrontal angle should be between 115 to 130 degree it is little more in females and little less in males uh, males will be having below 120 whereas in females will be having more than 120 degree angle at the same time the naso labial angle is also little more in females is the angle between the nose and the upper lip so in, in, in the ideal angle is around 95 degree and in females it is little more than 95 degree in males it is little less than 95 degree so these two angles also define the nose very nicely and if you are able to maintain those angles then the result of rhinoplasty also becomes very nice i hope i am clear till now now there are few more terms which we should understand before uh, we proceed for rhinoplasty so this is basically ala of the nose this portion we call as the, the side wall in the inferior part we call as the ala of the nose